So I had been planning on a mask tutorial or maybe even a series of them. And somebody asked me if I could help with animating a mask. So I very quickly made this scene um, to show you how you can animate a mask in one way. Um, I wanted to find some way that could be interesting to learn it. And so here I just have um, transitioning from working out to going out that night. So let's make this together. What we're going to do to start is I'm going to go to my studio and I'm going to get a gym seat. I'm just going to type in the search. It's going to come up with some of my 2D. I'm going to grab the 3D one. It looks like it's fine, but I'm just going to make sure it's fitting the canvas. So I have my background. Now I need to get my character. So we're going to have Lenka, maybe make her just a little bit bigger. And she's working out. So I'm going to click on the action. I'm picking this one because this one is longer. We don't really need to be watching her work out that long. So I'm going to take the shorter action. And I wanted to make her look a little tired like the other one. So I'm going to click on the label and I'm just going to make her look a little sad because she doesn't want to be working out anymore. Um, I'm going to disable the start as well. So she just begins the workout. If I didn't have this, we would see her transition into that. We don't need that. I do the disable end, but you'll notice it still has the dropping of the dumbbells, which I wanted to get rid of. But anyways, so let's just quickly change her into a pair of shorts so she's working out otherwise she looks good now what we're going to do is as she finishes working out i'm going to reduce this a little bit you can reduce the screen i'm sorry the timeline down here or you also can just click and drag here so that way we don't have to be seeing everything off the screen I'm going to add an animation of walking. So then as she turns to start to walk, I'm also going to click and drag the background so she doesn't end up disappearing. That doesn't end up disappearing. As she begins to walk, I'm going to click on the character animation, position, easing is linear. Be sure you're not down here like I am. I just expanded that and sometimes I forget and then I add an animation and it comes on the background and I don't want that. So you can click on it, right click and delete that. I'm always animating the wrong thing. <laughs> and then As she walks, I'm just going to put her at the at the end. I'm going to hold down my shift key and my left arrow just so she stays on a linear line. I don't have to click and drag her. And I'm not going to worry that she's now walking through the, um, the weights because we're going to have it transition to another scene. So I'm not going to worry about that. So here she goes and she's walking across. Looks good. All right, now what we're gonna do, and I may have made that a little too long, so let's shorten that a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both the background and the character, and you can right click and group, or I actually just use Command G, same thing. And I'm gonna label this gym. So this is the gym scene we want. Now we need a mask. So I'm going to add a rectangle, click on it and expand it so it's covering the whole scene. Don't worry about the color. Don't worry about the size. It's not as long as the scene, but it will adjust. So then I'm just gonna cl 
select both of those, right click, mask, gym scene with mask. Let me show you that again. You can always unmask it, but you're gonna select both, right click, mask, gym with rounded rectangle. There we go. Now we wanna animate the mask like I did in the first one. So as she starts to walk, I'm going to add the animation there. We can always change it after, but we can get the animation in there. So I'm going to so tap so it's outlined in blue. And I know I'm animating the right thing. The secret with, the, um, with animating a mask is you have to detach the mask up here on the left. It's going to be attached. You need to detach it. Then add your animation. I'm going to use linear as the easing again. This time you're going to choose position and scale. Then I'm going to go to my end keyframe. And this might be a good place for the transition to happen. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this white bar. I can see well, you can, I can't blow up the, the arrow, but you can see that it has a little black arrow. I'm going to click and drag it over. Now, I'm going to leave a little bit right there, only because over a lot of times, I used to love masking and animating masks. Um, when I go all the way, which is what we want to do in the end, but then if I needed to grab it, it was really hard for me to be able to find the right um, node there. So I'm just going to leave it with a little bit visible for right now. But now you can see that it disappears. Now, why do we want to detach it? Don't attach it again. You're not going to like what you see. Now it just squishes it at all because it's now animating all of the elements in the scene. So you're going to leave it detach mask and then nothing changes. So there, we're half done. All right. Okay. Sorry, my loom all of a sudden just stopped working. So I just am starting again right from this point. So it might not be too matchy matchy with the first part, but we've got our first animation done and we have nothing underneath there. So we need to create another scene. And all I'm going to do is select the gym scene and duplicate it. I also tend to just use command D, but you can do it either way. Let's change this to street. I'm also just going to get rid of the masking animation. I might want it, I might not, but it's always easier to keep it and delete it at the end than try to recreate it. So now what we have you're not seeing any difference. We can still see the mask animating, but underneath is still the same scene. So we're not seeing anything when we do that. So what we're going to do is we are going to go in the street scene, select it, open the group, and I need to change my backgrounds because we're going to have her in an evening. So I put in street and I just want to find one that is a background, but maybe an evening one. Where's the one that I used? Um, I'm not, I don't want to waste time. So I'm just going to take the bus stop. I'm going to select the gym and delete it. Now we see that she's doing her workout at the bus stop. But the reason why I keep, the reason I duplicated it and I keep all of the actions, even though we won't see it, is because then I don't have to worry about timing, sizing, all of that. I know that they're going to be at the exact same um, spot and the exact same position and size. So I am going to just change her into some evening wear and maybe give her, just so she looks different, give her longer hair. So now we see that she has all the same actions. 
But this is about where we're going to end up transitioning when we go back to the main part of the screen. So I'm just going to save that and I'm going to go back to the main timeline. And now we see her working out. And then as it starts to transition, we see her turn into the evening. Now, remember I said, we're going to fix that because we don't want that to stay there. But if I had had any problems, I now would have been able to go in and fix it carefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the end, click and drag and just get rid of it and see how they overlap. And now it would be hard to be able to do it. So that's just something I do for myself because I don't have any patience to figure it out. But now there we go. Let's start her here so we don't have to watch the whole thing. You can speed this up or slow this down by clicking and dragging the key frames to different positions. You can move this down a little bit and make it longer. If you make any changes to the animation of the character, I would say then just delete your second scene and go back and duplicate it unless you're really patient and know how to how to do that quicker and easier. Now this could stay here and now we see it transitioning again. If you want to make her going off into another location, then you could just do the same thing. You can duplicate this underneath and then have it transition to that if you want. Something that I did do, um, you don't have to, but here's something that you can do. You can also add a bit of a shadow if you want. So say I have a two and a five. It's at, usually once you mask, it goes to zero. So you can just either click and drag this and spin it around, or you can type in the, um, the value that you want, whatever it is you want to do. But we would want it to be here on this side because it doesn't make any sense to have it going off to the side. So if you notice, if I make it bigger, it's making a shadow. You could lighten it, darken it. You don't have to. Um, I think I did in the first one just because it shows it a little bit as one that's coming in. You also could um, add a border if you want. So say I wanted to add a white border to just show that line. I don't think I'd want it in this, but I have done it in other kinds of transitions. You could do that. However, notice it's now highlighting the whole thing. And I don't really want that. If you just want to have like a bar that animates, then all you have to do, because this is still detached, is you can just make it a little bit bigger than the seam by clicking and dragging on the corners. It's not changing the format size underneath because the mask is detached. And now, you see it do that. At the beginning, I might also make it a little longer because I don't want it there for the whole scene. So you can do that if you decide that you want to have something that shows the two scenes different. You can use a shadow, you can use a line, you can change the color of the line if you want. You can go in and say, all right, I'm going to use it as the same color purple. If you want that, whatever you want, you can just have fun with it. But hopefully that helps. Actually, the dark purple, you don't see it as much, but it's still a line. Um, but hopefully that helped a simple way to animate the mask. The key is detach the mask and do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not reattach it because it's just a mess. We definitely need to detach it. Now, I'm going to have to control Z, control Z, because I don't, it wasn't taking me back to the original. So control Z, which is also right here, is undo. So say I didn't plan on doing this, but say I detach that again, and now it's made a mess. 
I tend to do um, Command Z, but you can either redo or undo. So you can click right here, undo, and then it will go back. And then if I wanted to go back to my mistake, <laughs> I could redo it, but I don't want that. All right, I hope that helped.